dude ai is next level now it's like every week it's getting more interesting yeah man yeah, how so AI, ai race well it's the things i'm typing in now <laughs> 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 so it's not as much AI it's as much as how I get more it. creative. <laughs> Dude, I used uh, I used AI last night to cook dinner or two nights ago, See? Wednesday. Wait, I tell you, I did. Did they cook it? It's amazing. It. No, they didn't. So <laughs> driving home and it's, it's my night to cook. So I said, hey, let's just see what happens. I already knew what I was going to cook, and I'm like, let's let's try this out. And so typed in Chat GPT. Uh, I have chicken and sweet potatoes, want to make a meal in a cast iron skillet. What should I do? And it spit out a whole recipe of stuff. Awesome. I was like, all right, let's see what happens. Did it? Delicious. Mm, so cool. even my wow. kids were raving. They were like, this is Holy the best smokes. thing we've had in a while. That might be <laughs> one like, of the best right. ads for chat GPT. Dude. Yeah. Joel just- <laughs> what does that say about Christie's cooking? No, no it's it Joel's night. Yeah, it was my night to cook, so it was more. Oh, I think it was just Joel. Yeah, 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 it's just me. Thought the kids were like, "This is the best thing we've ever had, well, ever, Dad." They say that every night. So it doesn't really <laughs> matter. They're, they're not the smartest. We're kids. teaching them appreciation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, certain nights you cook. Yeah, really? Like what yeah. nights? Uh, any night that I can, basically. So not Wednesday or Thursday. <laughs> oh, I like. I enjoy. I it. I, like I'm Google also calendar. like. Oh no, we're I'm not like that Joel. organized. I'm yeah. Tuesday nights are my nights to cook. Tuesday, yes. yeah. Monday, Tuesday. Amber does take over sometimes. She's like, oh, I just feel like cooking. I was like, okay. I enjoy cooking. Yeah. I so do too. Me too. As much as I can, I like, I cooking. like to do it. And especially now that I can just have AI do it for me. It's yeah. it's great. <laughs> AI. I have, macaroni, I, I, I have macaroni and cheese. Well, it doesn't cook what it for you. I, I have macaroni, <laughs> cheese, and... Oh, no, that's bad. I have Velveeta <laughs> shells and cheese. What should I do? <laughs> Follow the instructions on the box, my man. <laughs> so now I'm going to try doing that, but making a shopping list as well. So I'm going to be like, hey, give me five meals for this week, blah, 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 and spits out the recipe. And I'm like, all right, give me a shopping list for those items. Yeah. I'm going to try mm. it. I'm, gonna I'm do trying a whole, to keep my carbs at this do level. A whole week. See what, dude, see how I'm it do develops. It. I mean, at a certain point, that's what it's going to be. And it'll tie like into that. Walmart or Amazon. You'll just say, like, I want these I five do. meals. Make me the I'm not even going to tell it what to make me. I'm just going to say, hey, give me five meals for the week. I, I might give it some parameters. Dude, like, you give it a budget? Yeah. See, what I'm thinking about is this. is when it gets to the point where that can connect to a... Um, An app? No, like a Walmart meal delivery Mark service. Com. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Walmart. Like yeah. It's, one day it'll connect to Amazon or Walmart. Yeah, Walmart. It'll be like, we'll hey, this us. week I want to make these three things. Like, give me everything I need to do it. And then we'll Walmart order. will be your door the next day. No, there's recipe websites now that you put that yeah. in there and they populate the Walmart yeah. grocery cart. And you hit check out. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've not seen that. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's missing the that next level of bridging the technology. Like, there needs to be a bridge. But uh, I really just want somebody to make it for us, too. Like. So so where, yeah, I agree with should, that. Yeah, it's a personal <laughs> chef. <laughs> I need a robot. I need a robot chef. What would happen? No, AI is wonderful and horrible. I know we talk about it a lot, but I was explaining to Nadine the other day. I was like, babe, do you realize what's happening right now? I'm like, literally, the landscape of the world is shifting yeah. with AI. <laughs> it's it's like this, like we're all it's happening. Yep. It's you know, AI has been used, we know, for a, mm-hmm. for certain reasons to a certain level. But like what's happening now is not like it's crazy. It's scary. It's exciting, but it's super scary. You know, you got the Google. Uh, what is it called? Like the event that they do. Oh yeah, they have um, a, IO Google IO. Yeah, what does that what mean? Is? I don't know. They're on on there. They uh they released all this all the new updates with Bard, mm-hmm. and um how it's tying in with all these other apps and all this kind of stuff. And so super exciting. It's gonna be great, but it's also like they're going to start actually using all of the data that they've been uh, collecting. <laughs> collecting on us for like decades now. Yeah, we're going to uh, like it too because it's going to be perfect. We're yeah. going to love Catered. it until we're controlled. Yeah. They're going to yeah. live our lives for us. <laughs> yeah. All we got to do is put our little headset on and look at the world that they've created for us. <laughs> wow, this is pretty. <laughs> Simulation theory. <laughs> in our in our AI headset, we're like super jacked. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're like really in shape. <laughs> you know, like we can run for days. and yep. then we Not take me. it off. And we be, look down. We're just like, really Pfft. skinny and yeah. tiny and weak. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my life. <laughs> huh. Thanks for sharing. Interesting choice. It was beautiful. It was- I'm trying not to be so uh, skinny and weak, dude. I've been doing some workouts, at the, the fit, like fitness classes and stuff. Yeah. Dude, let me just let me just take a second and talk to you about cardio classes. <laughs> 
So your cardio <laughs> classes are the devil. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't like them. What's so funny to me is this. I've tried to get guys, like friends, to go to some of these cardio classes. A little backstory. I don't know if I've talked about this yet here, but my wife is like, I mean, she's been doing, she's been, I mean, she's ran marathons. She's been a runner for many years. And what, about two years ago or so, she started going to the gym, started going to like these classes. And she now, she does like a, she trains one of the little classes. It's a 360 class at Club Four and stuff. And so, but I'm like, when I mean she goes to classes, she goes like six days a week to these crazy cardio, high intensity workouts. She'll do four classes in a row. So I finally started going. And like the first couple I go to, the warm up gets done. Mm-hmm. Five minutes of warm up. And I'm already like, <gasps> Good workout. <laughs> yeah, all right, good. ladies. Well done. That's always my I'm joke. Go get some yeah. water. That's always my joke at the end of the warm-up. They're yeah. like, all right, y'all ready? I'm like, that was great. All right, see y'all, see y'all next week. <laughs> I'll be over here on the floor. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but anyway, but but here's the deal. It's all women. Like, there's there's like one or two other guys every now and then. One other guy, I mean, he's, dude, this guy, he's probably like 65, and he's a runner and like hot, in shape, and like he kills it. But everybody else is women. And a lot of them are older women, you know, and stuff like that. But look, these ladies will run circles around you. And uh, anyway, I try to get guys to come out. They're like, oh, that's for the ladies. I'm like, no, it's not. What it is, they're scared. They're scared of the cardio. Or or they're wise. (laughs) No. No, they can't handle it. Oh, okay. I was about to say. (laughs) Oh, you tied it in there. No, they can't. And that's my point. I'm like, dude. Oh, yeah. So everybody's getting jacked, but their heart's like, and yeah. so, um, anyway, it's hardcore, man. So are you getting used to them now? Uh, well, you know, some of the, I'm actually going to the doctor today to get some blood work done. All right. Uh, I got some blood sugars. I got something going on because, um, you know, I'm not going to go into the whole story right now. I've got some issues where I have low energy levels and stuff like that. And so I start trying to, you know, usually you're working out or whatever and you hit that, you hit that wall and you're like, whew, and you take like what, maybe a 30 second break. Mm-hmm. And then you go back, you know, you, you take some water and then you start going in. With me, what happens is I like vision starts getting blurry or, you know, I start seeing stuff and then like I'm crashing. Yeah. So I was talking to Steven recently. He said, man, you know, if you do have a sugar issue, he said some people, they just have to have candy with them, like literally eating mm-hmm. straight candy, not like some other sort of protein thing or whatever. Yeah. Eating something that quickly your body can metabolize. Mm-hmm. Huh. So this week I've been doing that. I had gummy bears with me one time. I had uh, Starburst with me another time. And right before the class starts, I start eating some candy. And then during the class, if I start feeling a little bit weak, pop some more candy. And dude, I've had two of the most. It's been two of the most intense classes, and I've been able to work yeah. out the whole time, and I haven't crashed. And That's I wild, man. I'm telling you, I'm so, intimidated by a person I'm working out next to, and in the middle of the cardio session, they pop a little starburst <laughs> out of their pocket. Nah, dude, <laughs> like you look over Marshawn Lynch with his bag yeah. of skills. Yeah. Like, oh, he was on to exactly. something. <laughs> yeah, speaking of AI, though, uh, something funny happened this week in the sports world with AI. So if you know John ja Morant, John ja Morant is mm-hmm. a uh, really incredible athlete, incredible you know, uh, basketball player in the NBA. And apparently, I haven't seen the videos, but apparently he's been caught like with a gun, like on uh, Instagram Live a couple times or whatever. Multiple times. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, Tony Baker uh, comedy on Instagram, he's got a funny video about uh, making fun. He's got like this little water gun, and he keeps like, he's like, hey, here's my cat. Uh, And all of a sudden, like a gun comes into the shot, you know, and he's like, (laughs) my cat, man, I've been just trying to keep him. I just try to, you know, keep him fed and stuff. And he's like pointing to the cat with the gun. Anyway, so, uh, so here's the deal, you know. Nowadays, if somebody big makes a mistake, hey, I'm gonna apologize yeah. and mm-hmm. I'm just gonna own it, right? Well, we're in the we're in the stage of that now in our culture that apologies don't even matter anymore. Yeah, which hot take I could go there for a long time because you can't actually apologize anymore. I read an article yesterday. Anyway, it's eight reasons so why stop false apologizing. Repentance. You can't you can't you can't even repent anymore. Mm. Like literally, everything you do is a play on manip. You're just trying to manipulate people. So anyway, mm. whole other thing. But the funny part is, Ja Morant, now he's gotten caught twice. Yeah. And so um, so he puts out this statement, right? And the statement is this, Ja Morant's statement. I know I've disappointed a lot of people who have supported me. This is a journey. I recognize there is more work to do. My words may not mean much, but I take full accountability for my actions. I'm committed to continue to work on myself. Everybody's like, oh, you know, Adrian uh, yeah. Wojnarowski <laughs> shares that. Everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, then... I don't know who this is, but somebody else is like, 
bro used chat GPT. Hey. And then he's got a screenshot of his chat GPT. It says, Make, the prompt is make an apology paragraph that you got caught again. And guess what? The, <laughs> oh, guess what no. Chad GPT said? I deeply know I've disappointed a lot of people who have supported me. This is a journey, and I recognize there is more work to do. My words may not mean much right now, but I take full accountability for oh my, my actions. I'm committed to continue to work <laughs> on myself. Almost word for word. John ja Morant. I mean, we got NBA players using ChatGPT to say, I'm sorry for flashing guns on IG. Love this to is, see it. Man, what a time to be alive. It's great. <laughs> so I just entered, give me an apology written as Ja Morant for using AI to give an apology. <laughs> <laughs> Read it. I, Ja Morant, want to sincerely apologize for using AI to write my previous apology. <laughs> I know that this was a mistake, and I take full responsibility for my actions. I understand that my actions have disappointed many people, including my fans, my teammates, and my coaches. I am truly sorry for the pain that I have caused. I used AI to write my apology because I was feeling overwhelmed. I didn't know how to express myself in a way that felt genuine. I know that this is not an excuse, and I should have taken the time to write an apology myself. I'm committed to learning <laughs> from this experience and will do better in the future. I promise to be more thoughtful and responsible with my actions. I want to earn back the trust of the people who supported me, and I will work hard to do so. Thank you for understanding. Sincerely, Ja. <laughs> Dude, Q&A. You guys want to get the Q&A? Q &A? Q &A. It's time. Hey. Whoa. Hey, that was really Dude, loud. Dude, that's bro. the that was, jingle for Q&A. That was a lot of <laughs> clip that, that hurt. My, my ears were going. Q&A. Q&A. Q &A. You guys are real good. Q&A. That sounds better. The wow. other one was just yeah. very weird yeah. monotone. Right, you guys so. are incredible. Q&A. All right, here we go. We got a, a, no, a Q question. right here from Mr. Anonymous. Keep talking. That, I'm getting a refill. Scared. Okay, that's Mr. how he said it. Anonymous. I do want to say one thing to Mr. Anonymous. This camera right here, is this right? Yeah, they're if rolling. He's, okay, yep. he's focused on you. If you're going to send it anonymous, you got to use an anonymous email. You can't use <laughs> one that's tied to your first and last name because oh. that's what I see here at the top. Oh. So I'm not going to expose you, um, to, but just, you just us, know that. Though? Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you who it is. Okay, perfect. All right, from <laughs> Mr. Anonymous. So let's say, theoretically, I have a crush on three girls. And these girls are good friends with one another. Can what? I ask a question? Is this person married? No. <laughs> okay. What? So far, How old so good. do you think they are? Oh. It's a youth. It's oh, a, it's a, we're it's talking teenagers. teenagers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I feel like it's a youth. Um, a youth. For this reason. So they're good friends with one another. What do I do? Seeking advice <laughs> from four men with a lot of riz. Sincerely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now Mr. that you said that. No, no. Yes. <laughs> Oh, I feel like you should have a bow tie on. After yeah, that. dude, you're in a world of trouble. <laughs> Let me start by saying, <laughs> yeah, this that. is not going to be three friends. That's worse. Yeah, there's That's there's a lot of starting points from this one. Dude, on this there one. is. We need clarify. Oh, I think we should start. Also. I three think of we them should start. Friends. Watch this. We yeah. should start with bad advice. Let's just have a segment where okay. we give this guy. All the bad advice. Perfect. Get that all. We, all the sarcasm. Okay. All. <laughs> okay. And here's, then we'll get to the real. Here's advice. my first advice. Monday, Wednesday, Friday is one of the girls. <laughs> Tuesday and Thursday is the other. Saturday and Sunday is the weekend, pal. All there three. That's my word of a bad. You're advice gonna want to go you. get two phones. I <laughs> assume that you have one already. So get two additional phones. <laughs> <A> burner phone. <laughs> you're gonna have to swap them at yeah. all times. Yeah. yeah. I would say yeah. Just just go. Like I like the day approach. Um, I think just go for it. Just, just, you know, just date all of them at the same time and just, you know, break their friendship apart. You know, they probably yep. won't be friends after high school anyway. So I'm hey, assuming just, you go to church to blow the youth group up too. Yeah, yeah, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Text all three of them separately and tell them that, man, you're really the one I love. Or uh, yeah, text dude. them all at the same time. Group chat. And be like, who wants it? <laughs> dude, I'd dude, like to ask, ask all of you out to a date. Ask him a question, like like ask a question that you only had the answer to in a group chat. I like and, that, and the one that answers right, that's the one. There yep. you go. These there are all go. this. See, this is all good, bad advice. Yeah. Uh, do any of the girls like you? I think that's that's a good question, because if they don't, then. Don't. This is a weird conversation. Yeah. You're like the creepy dude that's like, I got three <laughs> girls I really like. So this person is 16 and they go to 
campus. Oh, this is more clarity. Yeah. Oh. Ooh, any other bad do, advice? Don't do anything else. Don't do anything we just said. Oh, yeah. that's a no-go. Yeah. Okay, so now what do they do? Now that they know <sighs> exactly what not to do. Yep. I say each of us take one small little segment of like, okay, here's one little piece of advice. Because, you know, we could start from the beginning and go to the end. But like, okay, realistically speaking, what's what's one small advice that you would have, Brent, for a 16-year-old? Mm-hmm. Three to, let's just assume. Let, let's also we got to set a little bit of, of some. Let's assume that all three girls do actually know who he is. Okay. Yeah, okay. Like, like yeah. he's not that it's big a good, of a. That's a good point. He's not yeah. that big of a creep. Okay. Yeah, okay. But like they know who he is, and uh, and and they are actual potential girlfriends. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Brent, first first level of advice. Man, I don't want to get too spiritual about it, but if I'm giving don't real get too advice, spiritual advice. Don't get too spiritual. I mean, to, I mean <laughs> okay. pray about it. Ask the, ask the Lord. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. As a pastor, I should not be that that sarcastic to that response. It yeah. is a true one. Yeah. There's other it's advice too. Yeah. I mean, like that's one small, that's my there's small pray nugget. About pray it. about it. Just pray about it. Micah. <laughs> yeah. I mean this this is not an easy situation. Um, I mean, you got to find out. Like, I mean, you say they're all friends. So the way teenagers work is there's going to be conversations. As soon as you ask mm. one of them out Oof. or mm-hmm. talk to them, everyone else is going to know. So you need to probably shoot your shot with the one that you like the most. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like I just agree. honestly, and like set up in your heart. If they say no, that it's not going to be weird. And you got number two. <laughs> well, I, I was about to say, and that's the three. awkward part is that they're going to talk. And so if, once you shoot your shot, yeah. they're going to know like, oh, I'm I'm the second. And then and then the second one rejects you. And now it's the third one's like, no, I don't even want I don't, I don't to talk to you. That's if they know your name. Yeah, um, that's true. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Figure out if they know who you are first. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, uh, you got to go for it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you do. Go for it. Shoot your shot, bro. Yeah, if you were like 13 or 14, I'd be like, dude, don't even worry. Like, just, yeah. just chill out, man. 16, it's like, okay. You know, you got to you gotta get your heart broken. Dude, it's a you good, 16 is a good age to it's get good. rejected. It's a Go good ahead yeah. and <laughs> shoot your shot, bro. You might get swatted. They might laugh at <laughs> yeah. you. But hey, guess what? What's there's, your name again? There's more, <laughs> there's more than just those three girls. So hey, okay. You okay. talk about being rejected. Yeah. All right. What's the first time that you were rejected by a girl? Oh. Like, I'm talking, you liked a girl, you asked her out, you did something, and then she totally just shut you down. Okay, I do. Yeah, I have a, a story. This is in another state that I lived, so I'm just trying to think um, how to, uh, they were twins. <laughs> there was okay. one that was a little prettier. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was like in fourth grade. So you only like flirted that. with the ugly one, so the pretty well, one no, would actually want It you. was a similar scenario to, to our young lad right here. Like, he knows that he's got two <laughs> options. But I, I asked the, the prettier one if she'd like to be my girlfriend. She said no. I said, you know. <laughs> Number two, she said no. Also, <laughs> and I said, "Y'all well, need to pray about it." <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ain't Christian. That's right. <laughs> said I'm moving to Mississippi. I was rejected about uh, the first time I was rejected it was like 12, 13. I was at that age, mm. and I asked this girl I really liked um, to a banquet, to like a, a, a Valentine's Day banquet, and like we had gone two years before that, and so like I thought, hey, this would be good. We're gonna be good to go. Like I. And uh, <clears throat> she's like, yeah, let me let me ask my dad. Let me kind of think about it type of thing. And I was Ooh. like, cool, cool. I just, hey, she's just going to check. She's just going to check and yeah. see, make sure that there's nothing Calendar's on the calendar. Clear. Totally exactly. get it. <laughs> and, she's but, responsible. I like we're going to go to the banquet yeah. together. I know, you know. And, and then the next time I talk to her, she's like, uh, so I'm not, I, I don't think I'm going to go to the banquet this year mm. with you. Oh. I was like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's cool, bro. That's cool. Yeah. Instantly flipped the script. You know what? I ain't going with you. (laughs) I I forgot to call you and tell you I changed my mind. I got two other girls I can ask. That's right. (laughs) They're all friends. (laughs) So so I I could take you to the spot in my room at my parents' house where I was at when it happened because I felt like this overwhelming, like, you know, sheet of grief and sorrow <laughs> fill my yeah. heart and soul. Turn on boys to men, end of the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I just wet. Dude, yeah. we got off the phone within 10 seconds of her saying that she wasn't going to go. I was like, okay. She was like, yeah. I was like, well, cool. cool I was cool, like, cool. well, hey, 
I'll talk to you later. She was like, okay. I was like, bye. <laughs> that was, um, that was, a. I talked to her one other time about th- two or three, not that long, <laughs> like a year later. One at a time. Next banquet and season. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, but she's that shot again. Let's see. No. Run it back. No. <laughs> Dude, super awkward. Yeah. But, you know, that first time you get rejected, man, that's pretty. You ever got rejected? Don't say no. Oh. Uh, Don't be that you're guy. You're about to get Don't jumped right now if you Dude, do it. Don't I'm about be to that pour guy. This bleach coffee on you. <laughs> well, I also. I prayed about there it. Was a- <laughs> <laughs> the Lord gave me insight. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to think. You were probably I mean, so high you didn't no, know that well, you got no. rejected. <laughs> no, there were some times where I like I made some like I made a move and I was like I I got no feedback. I was like, okay, I'm moving on. Okay, yeah. yeah. But nothing anytime I was like asking a girl out, there, right, I was yeah. always pretty confident. I was like, okay, I'm gonna get a yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Joel, were you ever rejected? Yeah, I was rejected like middle school, kind of the same yeah. thing. Yeah, the old banquet thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, Chris rejected me two days ago, and <laughs> I was like, "Wait, we can't do this. We're married." Yeah. She's like, "Oh, yeah, that's, that's true." That was after that, man. I really, I was a dumb kid. I didn't realize how many <laughs> girls like me, and it's probably for the better. Like, I could have yeah. dated so many more girls had I been aware of that. But that's had, good. if I was aware of how much riz I had back Ooh, in the day, riz. Yeah. Then it would have been it would have been bad. So yeah. so after that, uh, the twins said no. I think my dad said something to me because you know I was I was a little mm-hmm. hurt. He said, "Hey, Micah, this is a classic dad line. Sit you down, encourage you. Hey, Micah, you're the marrying kind, not the dating kind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be that dad. <laughs> don't you put that evil on me. <laughs> so whenever the girls that you want to marry potentially one day have dated all the other cool guys, yeah. they're going to be like, you know what? I'm going to settle down with the old dad looking guy. Yeah, you know, that that's exactly the, it. No, New balances I think, and white socks. I think it was socks. too nice. Dude, Father's Day is coming up. New balances, white <laughs> socks. I had to check and see if any of us had new Dude, balances. I on. saw you glance I was down. like, uh-oh. <laughs> hey, new balances are cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Did the we monarchs. answer that question? No, we have. No. We got to go back. Okay. Okay. Back. That's so, what I was like, huh? so, so first round, you know, it's like, hey, pray about it. Uh, you know, uh, ask the ones you like out the most. Make sure that they know your name. <laughs> You're not the creep. And those are, yeah, those are, you know, I mean, there's some fun, there's some fun things we could say and we could continue to say. Um, I think that uh, if we were really kind of, kind of start going down this more of the serious route or more of the actual, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah. getting a little bit more serious. Um, uh, so for me, when I was 14 years old, Nadine actually started coming to church and I saw her and I had seen her before and uh, I thought she was cute and all that kind of stuff. But I also knew based upon just the way that she kind of acted and how she came across, I was like, this girl ain't, she ain't right with God. Like mm-hmm. you just knew it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? She had that look. She had that like, she had that rebellious, you know, like, I don't want to be here at church look. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, is that it? Is that, y'all know? Yeah, that's, y'all know that was good. I mean, that's, that's how I feel every Sunday. <laughs> uh oh whoops too uh, honest too vulnerable too vulnerable <laughs> i need to back into my honesty Uh-oh. Anyway, <laughs> so um so i literally i had a buddy and um I, I was talking to him i was like yeah man i think she's cute i was like but no nah, she ain't she ain't right you know and anyway a few weeks later she got saved and uh and then i waited a little bit longer and then eventually we started talking and we started dating all that kind of stuff but for me, I was like, if a girl, if a girl ain't right with God, yeah, like it's not even worth talking. No, nope, you know? I agree. Which that I think that threshold it doesn't really exist anymore. Like I don't know hmm. how many young people do you hear actually say that? Yeah, I mean, I, I it's Some. it's a topic of conversation. Is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's heard. still like fifty fifty, or like higher than that. I think yeah, fifty fifty safe. 50/50? Yeah, of, of like church kids. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's a safe number for real. That's good. I mean, it's better than what I thought it would be. It's still horrible, but it's, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So it's like, are they right with God? Like, do they actually have it's a relationship a with God? You yep. know. So I think the pray about it thing. So sometimes you don't have to pray about it. It's like it's, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. It's like if I mean, you know, through their social media, you know, through the friends, like you know where they're at with God. A lot of times, just from that. Yep. And so that could that might weed out one of them right there. It's yep. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, they're friends, but you know. Dude, that's that's the chick that you know does that yep. or whatever, and it's like that ain't that ain't girl from material, you know. I think um, on those kinds of things, like I think there's a merge lane to dating, uh, or there can be. Uh, and dude, hang out as friends. I'm talking like in groups of friends, mm-hmm. and just see if there's some sort of connectivity, like like more than just 
the three of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I was wondering if you three wanted to hang out with me. No, not like that, but like, no, nah, hang around well, a group of so friends. So when I was 13, yeah. there was a girl that I started liking. She was 15. I was 13. And uh, she started, you know, we kind of started talking. Here's the deal. I knew she wasn't right. I knew she wasn't right with God. Like, it was obvious. Mm -hmm. And But I thought she was hot. And uh, so my dad kind of got wind of what was going on. And all he, he walked in my room one night. He said, Jordan, you're talking to so-and-so, right? Like, you like her? I was like, yeah. He's like, why do you like her? He already knew. Yeah. He already knew. <laughs> and I was like, I think she's pretty. And he was like, I was like, he's like, he basically said something like, you know she's pretty seductive. Yeah. Like, he straight up just called it out. Love it. And I was like, yeah, she's got that reputation. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was obvious. Like, it was straight up obvious. That's the type of girl she was. Mm -hmm. And um, and whenever he had that conversation with me, he was like, what are you looking for in a girl? Like, why would you, why are you wanting to be with her? Yeah. You mm -hmm. already know what she's like. She, I don't think she's the right girl for you, you know. But he also knew, like, hey, I'm, get, I'm 13. Yep. You know, and that's young. I mm -hmm. understand. But you're still, at that point, you're starting to make decisions yep. yeah. for yourself. On what kind of girl you want to be with. Yeah. Yep. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to send you on a trajectory. Mm -hmm. And he corrected that, like, at, at the first time, that was the first girl I started talking to that was, that was you know, yeah. off, off base. And it affected the way that I approached even when I saw Nadine two years, mm -hmm. or yep. whatever, a year and a half later. I was like, she's not, you know, she wasn't <laughs> like the other girl, like I was describing. She wasn't that you know, far gone, yeah. but, uh, but it was still like a filter. So I think, you know, I think there's prayer obviously, but I think sometimes there's like an obvious, yep. Hey dude, you know, you know what you're getting into first off. And that could weed out some. Well, and I like the know. conversation. Your dad brought it to you, but, uh, depending on your relationship with, I'm, I'm thinking about this question, man, depending on your relationship with your, your parents, dude, yeah. bring that question to them. Yeah. Hey, what do you, what do you like? Yeah. What a cool question uh, as a parent, but also, man, nobody knows you better than your parents is mm -hmm. what do you see in me? And I'm thinking about these three girls. I like them. Like, what do you think? And just see what they say and, and invite them to ask questions. Yeah. And just cause they're in church doesn't mean like they're dating material. Yeah. Just cause they're in church. Mm -hmm. that, that's not, yep. that's not the threshold where they go to church. That, no. Yeah. Like who are they? Yep. And, yeah. and I think this is, I think this is maybe a big component and this is what I believe. I believe ultimately dating is, we say dating and, and we don't, if we were to use the term courting, courting and dating really are the same thing to a certain extent. But I would say courting really has to do with marriage and dating has to do with just like having somebody in your life. Like that's kind of, yeah, you know, so if we were to say dating is kind of the lesser serious relational uh, yeah. format right. <laughs> yeah. and then courting is moving towards. But here's the deal. I think you shouldn't date anybody that you don't see, that you can't see a scenario playing out where they're their wife or husband material. Yep. That's that's my opinion. And, and, and the moment that you're like, this ain't it, get out. Yeah. Because what's the other reason of being in it? It's true. Just like. Uh, uh, They're uh, hot. Well, that's, no, it, there's either yeah. sexual stuff, you know, like there's, there's that, that's or there's true. just, yeah. you don't want to be alone. Yep. And, which actually speaks to something deeper that's going on inside totally of you. Totally agree. Yeah. And that's where uh, prayer is not, I'm not talking even specifically about, hey, which option should I choose? Maybe. God will reveal that, hey, maybe right now is not the best time to be dating anyone for a minute. Right. Because uh, maybe you do have an attachment of always being with somebody or needing to be with somebody. When you're that young, man, like embrace, man, being with family, being with your close friends and just developing a healthy r relationship with the Lord where you then become ready to date and pursue somebody. Yeah. So you said good. when you're that young, is there a date or is there an age for dating or is it a maturity thing? I think a maturity thing, but I think 16 is a, I, I feel like it's always, I mean, being in student ministry the past eight and a half years, um, 16 is where the independent starts to, hey, you're getting your first job, you're getting your license. So you start making more serious decisions. Um, so I think diving into that realm is, is a good, could be a good choice, yeah. but I think every parent should make, Sorry. Help. I, I went to fix the wire and it <laughs> slammed in my face. <laughs> you, were, you were doing good. Keep going. I think every, um, I think like Micah said, involving your parents and helping you make that decision is a big deal and a very healthy conversation yeah. to be able to have with your parents is, is very good for you and for the person you're pursuing or yeah. potentially pursuing. I think that's good, man. What do you think, Joel? What age? 
Uh, I, the same way, man. Like 16 just feels like a good, a good number for all this thing. Maturity obviously matters. Uh, it, it, 13, like you said earlier, doesn't really matter. Like you're 13, calm down. Uh, but 16, <laughs> you're a few years away from, you know, getting out of the house, stuff like that. So it's a good time to, to have the safety of being at home and having your parents mm-hmm. super involved in your life to where you can feel that rejection or go through some of those things. Uh, and there's still some safety in your closeness with your parents to kind of navigate through that. I think it's really important to have that moment while you're still at home. And not have it when you're That's not. Good. I think that can get pretty dangerous. Yeah, I think I think I I do agree. I, I um, so the older that I get, <clears throat> I used to think don't date ever. Just like seriously, it's not worth it. I date it, but I'm like, don't do it. The older I get, the more I I see how much you learn, how much you learn about relationships, how much you learn about yourself. Yeah. Whenever you are in those intense, you feel those intense emotions. Yeah. Like whenever I talk to young people who they break up or whatever you know, 16 ish or whatever. And they break up and they like, they can't eat for like two or three days. Yep. There's like, I'm so, I just, I love her. I know what you're feeling yep. and it's legitimate, deep, emotional things that you're feeling. Like you, you might really love that person, but it also doesn't mean that they're the one, yep. you know, that you're going to marry and going through that loss, you learn something in that. So there's a level of it. Like you said, even with walking through it in the house with your parents and stuff like that, I, I think is really valuable. And it's a great, opportunity for parents to be yeah. involved in that that's that's where i was yeah. at because we're talking to a, a teenager right now but it is an incredible opportunity as a parent to yeah. to be able to teach train how to just interact with other people yep. um, yeah. like how how to uh be a person of integrity uh how to uh communicate on phones um mm-hmm. you know teaching people how to interact teaching people how to use uh boundaries teaching people how to literally uh respond to conflict in relationships I think a lot of times dating relationships um, are training grounds for the way that you're actually going to interact when you're married. Like, yeah, you learn you learn um, tools, you learn how to engage when you're you're butting heads, how to go through conflict, how to manage difficult times. So uh, I'd, I'd be hesitant to say a certain age. Um, yeah. And I was just curious, but yeah. it is a maturity thing. It does. I seem, agree. Yeah, it yep. seems like high school. There is a major shift. You are right. At that 16 with driver's license, those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. There's a new I would say for some people, they don't really want, they don't really feel the desire to be in a relationship. It's great. And, and, but yet they will get in a relationship just to like fit in with everybody else. Yeah. And that's a poor reason to get in a relationship mm-hmm. just because all your friends are in a relationship. Doesn't mean that you have to be in a relationship. Yeah. Like, like throw that out. Yep. Um, cause you'll, you'll, you know, you know, it might end up hurt. You might end up hurting somebody else. A uh, funny story. It's good. I was talking to a guy a few years ago. And he was like, he was 19 or 20 ish. And I was like 25. I had been married for a few years. And uh, I was talking to him one night and um, this girl called him and he was like, oh God, let's just say her name was, uh, I don't know. Nancy. Nancy. Dude. And uh, great choice. I almost said Sharon. I was like, that's a, that's definitely not normal. A normal name for a man. Anyway, <laughs> Nancy. And uh, he's like, oh, God, it's Nancy. And I was like, aren't you dating her? And he was like, yeah. Oh. I, was like, <laughs> I, said, I said, why do you say it like that? He said, dude, she's so annoying. And I was like, this is like 13 years ago. Now he's married with kids and, and not to her. <laughs> and, uh, I was like, bro, why are you dating her? And he's like, I said, why don't you break up with her? He's like, I don't want to hurt her feelings. And I said, oh, bro, wow. every day that you stay with her, yeah. you're hurting her more. I said, does she really like you? He said, yeah. I was like, no, like you have to get, get out, out immediately, yeah. dude. Yeah, he ended up doing. He ended up breaking off yeah. with her. But that was a scenario where it's like I don't really want to be in this relationship. I'm just in a relationship for well, potentially for the uh, for the sex. And um, you know, I mean, that's a reality here. Yeah. That's, but that was that was his approach. It's just like I don't want to hurt her. And yeah. I was like, bro, that is the that is you don't. She is not wife material. You know that. Yeah. You don't even love her. You don't like. Just yeah. bail. And when all else fails and you're in a relationship with somebody you really don't want to be, um, Bard gives you a great breakup text. Oh, yeah. You yeah. always do that. Sure. Here's one. I'm so sorry to do this, but I think it's time for us to break up. Hold on. A breakup text? Is yeah. that what we're doing nowadays? People yeah. break up over text. Oh, 100%. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. 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 It's ridiculous. Very rarely do you do yeah. it in person. It's ridiculous. It's yeah. less harmful. Less Disrespectful. Hurtful. It's easier. I, I got some. If you break over, t- break up over text, you're not mature enough to have a real relationship. Boom. I agree a thousand percent. There we go. And if I'll you're, if you're using Bard to do it, yeah, you're, definitely you're not, not. You're not ready. I'll just put that out. And I'll say that, by the way, I'll say that with <laughs> yeah. adults. 
So like, we're talking you, about teenage relationships, but mm. like, let's kind of move into the adult dating because the, as culture goes on, people are getting married later and later. And so yep. dating and courting and this whole conversation is not just teenagers, it's adults. And so what, what I've seen is adults that date, first off, there's a whole lot more uh, sexual activity. In adults who date than, than teenagers, just because you're obviously most of the time, you're, I mean, you're, you're obviously on your own. There's no boundaries. So there's yeah. no boundaries. Nobody's going to tell you what to do or not to do. You don't have a parent in the house anymore. Yep. And so, so people get, um, they start dating in, in their adult years. And it's like, first off, because they're not looking in a biblical pattern, mm-hmm. there's usually, you know, for, for some people, there's no prayer. That's where you get into uh, uh, premarital sex. Here's the deal with, uh, I think this is something we need to talk about. Physical touch, whenever you hold hands, whenever you yep. hug, whenever you kiss, whenever you show signs of affection, and there's literal skin-to-skin yep. contact, you have to understand that there are chemicals in your body that are being released. Yeah. They're connective chemicals. Yep. And it's wonderful between people who are going to progress in that relationship sure. and, and marriage and stuff. It's We call it, I mean, part of it's a soul tie. Sure. Right? Mm-hmm. And um, what happens is people... They begin to have physical contact. A lot of times, and this isn't hundred percent, but a lot of times the the woman or the the you know the girl in the relationship is a lot more. Um, they let their emotions get involved very quickly. Like they give their 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 heart away yeah. more than maybe a guy does. Not that guys don't, because yeah. I definitely gave my heart away. But um, and so so what happens is like the dude I was just saying. He's flipping about it, yep. and she's like she's all picturing in, her wedding day. Yep. And because for her, that's what this is leading to, and he's like, "Nah, this ain't it." Yeah. But the more that they kiss, the more that they do other stuff, her her soul is literally like connecting with his, and mm-hmm. and and he's like, "Eh." So what happens is they get ripped apart. Yep. And now a little part of them has been kind of left with that person, and yep. depending how long they were together, depending how much they slept together, all that kind of stuff. And now that's ripped deeply apart. connected. Yep. Yeah. And we're created to do that. And it's wonderful. Right. That's why people struggle to eat sometimes whenever they break up with somebody. They're literally being affected to mm-hmm. a physiological level because that's where they've gone in the relationship. Yeah. Right. So adults, man, you know, and y'all can chime in however y'all see, but but with adults, it's like some of them get a, like a, a get out of jail free card with how they date. And then they they, they move in together and like cohabitation yeah. is like a norm. And I would like to say it's a norm in the world, but it's a norm in the church. Yeah, it is. For some people, they don't know about cohabitation. They just think it's normal. And it's like, well, biblically speaking, and and even if you go to the Jewish pattern, which is what Jesus lived by, like, they're like, oh, Jew, we're Gentile. You know, Jesus, he was a Jew, but he didn't. He he abolished the law, and he did. Well, no, not really. There's a lot of things, custom customs in the Jewish world that he he believed in. Marriage was not like, hey, let's try it out. Let's just get together. You know, no. Yeah. It was, or some of it was arranged, obviously. But nowadays, we we court. We see, hey, man, are we compatible? Not sexually compatible. Yeah. Not, uh, you know, live together and and act like we're married just to get a, like a you know a dry run through this thing. No, 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 no. We're going to we're going to court. We're going to do that. And then guess what? Whenever we get engaged, we're still going to remain pure. Yeah. Because even though you're you're engaged, it doesn't mean you're married. Yep. True. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, well, we're gonna get married anyway, so we can start fooling around. It's like, no, the, that's not it. Because you're not married yet. Yeah. Like engagement, betrothal is supposed to be this, this preparation for marriage, where you begin this life together. And people start getting everything out of order, and then they wonder why they have issues when they get married. It's true. Mm-hmm. I would say if you're in that yeah. too. So me and Christy lived together before we got married, mm-hmm. and we're doing it all like. And one day we just had the conversation of like this is wrong. And so we're going to stop. And so we went and we got married. It wasn't the greatest wedding. Like it wasn't this huge deal. But if you're in that and you sense like, I should stop doing this. Like, man, just make the change. Just cut yeah. it and go get married. It's great. Yep. doesn't matter if it's at a courthouse, yeah. it's at a church. So many people are so scared to do something because, oh, it's not perfect. Who cares, bro? Do yeah. the right thing. It's yeah. better to be right than to, to have your dream wedding. I'll just say that. Get off my, my stand now. No, I think that's a great stand. (laughs) I mean, so uh, what I've seen with people who uh, cohabitate before they get married is um, they think that it's the same thing as marriage. And maybe you can speak to this, that it's like, oh, this is the same thing as marriage. And but there's there seems to be a level of commitment 
and legitimacy, maybe I could say. For sure. To the relationship that, that even a lot of times for the woman, it's different. Yeah, it is. When, and, for and sure. I've had conversations. I obviously didn't live this, but um, in counseling and different things with people, I've warned. I've said, hey, listen, y'all been together for four years, seven years, whatever. But you're going through this process, and, and now you're getting married, and there's, there's this commitment thing. There's this permanency yep. that's going to change the way that you think about things. So now it's not like, hey, you got your time. I got my time. You got your, your money. You, I yep. got my money. Blah, 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 right? You got your yep. career. I got my career. Hey, if our paths go different directions, okay, we're just kind of seeing. And all of a sudden, it's like, no, we're, we're cemented together. Yeah. You know, we're in a bond. And that changes things. Yeah, it is. And I've had people, I've warned them about that. And no lie, 30 days after they got married, yeah. back in my office and, yep. and literally tell me to my face, everything that you say is exactly what's going on. We had the best relationship as we were living together for the last two to three years. And now we can't even agree on what type of cheese to buy in the store. Like we are at odds and yep. things are different for me. What is that? I don't know. So, I mean, you yeah, I think that. it's what you said. It's your commitment level. Cause when you're not married, you can leave whenever you want. Like, let's just be real. You can, you can leave and go get an apartment. You can do whatever you want. And there's no real consequence to it other than that relationship falling apart. Yeah. But when you get married, it's that it, it should be anyway, it should be another level of commitment of like, no, you're my wife now. Like you're my family. Like I am yours and you are mine. And yeah. I'm committed. Like I'm here for the long haul. It's not as easy as I just walk out of the house now and do whatever I want. It's like, it's a different level of intentionality. It changes the way you think about each other. Cause it's like, no, this is my person now. This isn't yeah. just somebody that I'm, yeah. this isn't my friend that yeah. I'm living with. This is, yeah. this is going to be the, the mom of my kids or it's just mm. takes to do a whole other level of, I think for a lot of guys, it's that commitment level of like, Oh crap. Like it, it can almost feel stuck. You're not stuck. Like no. you're committed now. Uh, and I think a lot of people are just afraid of that level of commitment. Well, we live in a non-commit non-committal society. Yeah. We grew up and nobody wants to be in any sort of contract, any sort of I mean, that's the world we live in. So marriage is just another one of those things now. So imagine just I mean, that's what's going on. We've got generations growing up where you don't want to be told what to do. You no parameters at all. And then marriage is in, in a lot of ways is a straitjacket. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is like, just, just go there. So you're all of a sudden in this committed contractual relationship that for a spiritual person, for a Christian, uh, there are, there are terms to this agreement that requires crucifying your flesh mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that requires sometimes yeah. you not getting what you want versus right. a relationship that is less non-committal or those types of things. So yeah, I was listening to somebody recently. I, I, I wish I could cite the source, but the statement was made. If you've been living together, adults, if you've been living together for two years and there ain't a ring on your finger and it was an instruction to the ladies, get out, get out, run, you know, that kind of stuff, because it's just, there's something, there is a, there's a hesitation to commit and it might go a long time because that commitment does something deeply uh, spiritual, the two becoming one, but also, I mean, it, it, it brings that true intimacy, spiritual intimacy. You hear people like say, "Well, we're going to get married whenever we have the right amount of money, like so we can have the right wedding and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff." And it's like, "No, you're that's never going to have the right amount of money." <laughs> whenever we, uh, <laughs> whenever we're ready, we're going to have kids. It's like you could be ready, but then you're going to have kids, and then you're like, "I'm not ready," but that's kind of part of it. Yep. You you jump into marriage at a, you you pray you 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 know you get counsel all that kind of stuff and and but. At some point, marriage is jumping off a cliff, and then it's about you and the other person that you marry. Uh, you know, your character being, mm -hmm. I mean, you being sanctified. Marriage is a tool yeah. of sanctification, right? Absolutely. But it's also, <clears throat> marriage, is a picture of, uh, marriage is a picture of Jesus in the church. Yeah, yeah. And if we think about marriage as just literally two people and, hey, our relationship and having kids and, and, and all that kind of, we, we keep it on this plane and we, and we fail to r realize what the scripture says that Christ loves the church like a husband loves a wife yep. and, and, and all these correlations and you realize, Oh wait, okay. God created marriage. All right. So this is a, this is a sacred bond. This is a sacred thing. And so whenever we start messing with this sacred, you know, in, th th this institution of marriage that God has created, for us to operate in, operate in, and we begin to, you know, tamper with the pattern and and not uh, operate in marriage according to how God has 
made it to operate and it starts falling apart. And we Why are we out. surprised? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, this is, this is, you know, it's them. It's, it's like, no, it's probably you. It's both of you at the very least degree. And I'll say this. Every marriage that I've seen fall apart has always been because of selfishness. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah, I agree. Time. And even marriages that are extremely dysfunctional and they're just two people that are just living in the same house together. They're just roommates, basically. The reason is it's selfishness on one or both parts, which let's just call it what it is. That's sin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, when my marriage has, has been horrible, it's because me or my wife were in sin. We were being selfish. We were not operating, you know, out of the fruit of the spirit. We were uh, we were just mean yep. or what self-centered. And that's why we were struggling. Yep. And so no matter who you marry, whether they're the perfect one or not, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. However you think about who you're with even right now. Um, where is the sin in my heart that's causing this dysfunction? Yeah. Uh, and, and that's, and then maybe this is part of the other segment. That's where the unequally yoked conversation comes in. Yep. Because the scripture says, what fellowship does light have with darkness? Uh, talking about unequally, yeah. being unequally yoked. That's why a believer should not, according yeah. to scripture, okay, this is going to potentially offend someone, Rouse right, or whatever. Others. <laughs> yeah. An unbeliever should not be dating a, yep. a believer. Now, if you're married, it's kind of a different. It's a different conversation. Mm-hmm. All right, yep. but as far, again, the prayerful. Hey, who is this? How should I approach it? If they're not a believer, Scripture says to not date and get involved with someone who's someone who's an unbeliever. Yeah, because of the issues that you're going to face. You, you will long-term. experience massive friction yeah. in a marriage for yeah. a believer and unbeliever. Because I mean, this this thing that God's created. Two becoming one is a process, yeah. and they are they are not the same. Right. <laughs> so it's it's mixing oil with water. It's it's just not going to work in a lot of arenas. So yeah. So it, it does go all the way back to the dating thing. This is why it's actually so important. Is because uh, if we run this pattern out, it's going to it's going to potentially harm our sanctification process as well. Yeah. yeah. So, dude, what a great combo around dating. That's good, dude, dude. Thank you for that. You know what? <laughs> Date all of them. <laughs> I, think, Wait, I think that's where we three. landed. Sorry. <laughs> back, to, back to the three phones. Let's start all over again. Right. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> you look back around. Anybody got a hot take? Um, I got a hot well, take. Do hit us. I got a hot hit take. Us with the hit us with the hottest of takes. The hottest of takes mm. is uh, uh, is whenever it's ghosting. It's oh. it's, it's getting ghosted. What's that? Uh, ghosting is whenever you text someone. Or you're in a conversation with someone, and then all of a sudden they just disappear, disappear yeah. weeks, months, potentially years, and they just they they're just gone. Hold on, let me or text people you back that you <laughs> yeah. exactly. Now here's the deal. I too am guilty of ghosting. At times. We we all yeah. accidentally, yeah. accidentally ghost accidentally. people, accidentally. and For that's sure. understandable. It's the intentional ghost. It's the it's the red, mm-hmm. right? I, there's yeah. a guy right now. Haven't seen him in about a year. Um, he had to go on a long trip, like six months or whatever. And uh, I text him like literally like four months ago. Hey, dude, what's going on? Red. Yeah. Uh, no response. Yeah. Literally two weeks ago, I was like, hey, man, you know, he's in another country. Hey, a lot of different things could happen. I know he's back. Yeah. And I text him. Hey, man, what's going on? How you doing? Red. No response. Yep. The last yeah, time tough. that we talked, it was great. Yeah. Dude, uh, hug. Dude. Uh, and just ghosted. Yeah. So what is that? Yeah, that that's that's tough. And like you said, I there are a couple of people that for whatever reason, I, I'll I'll get a text in a meeting that's like, oh my goodness, I forgot to reply. But I think what makes it difficult when we go when we're victims of ghosts, can we be victims? Hey, everybody can be a victim. Everybody's a Dude, victim, bro. It's the culture of victimhood. Yes, I'm usually the the other side, so I get to be a, a victimizer. Victim yeah, victimizer. Oh, you're offender. usually the victimizer. Offender. Yeah, yeah. What? The offender. offender. The yeah. offender. Oppressor. The oppressor. The oppressor. You're That's usually the, the oppressor. Yeah, I am. But anyway, so this time I'm the victim, which is which is exciting. <laughs> it's nice. This it's is a nice. new. This is a new world. <laughs> dude, all the old, power is yours, dude. Right? I just realized all I can moral say anything power, I want, and it's all true because it's your experience. It's uh, great down here. Yeah. Anyway, the. <laughs> <laughs> But when you don't get the response or they don't respond to you and then you see each other in public. Yeah. And it's it's the attempt. It's like, can we just say it? Yeah. Hey, you didn't reply or, or, Hey, are we good? Or just, 
we're not good. Okay, I hate you. <laughs> You're ugly. You dated the other three girlfriends. <laughs> you know that kind of. <laughs> but yeah, ghosting. So do you lean into it when you see that person though, or do you avoid them? It just depends on the situation. I agree. Yeah, yeah. It, there's it, some people that have ghosted me that I, I tried to avoid, like because I'm like, this is awkward. Yeah. I don't know what happened, but I feel like it's really awkward. Like yep. it's not worth going there. So I just kind of. But there's other people like we were so close or whatever. I'm like, dude. I text you, man. Yeah. I always, and they're like, I know, dude. I always like to make it a little awkward. Yeah. I'd be like, dude, good to see you. Did you yeah. add to my text? Oh, dude, oh, no, I no, like no. it <laughs> when hey. it's been so long that I forgot the offense. So like, Or I oh, had yeah. no idea that there was actually something yeah. wrong. So we see each other, and I'm genuinely excited. Yeah. yeah. Like, dude, what's up? How's... Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, why is this weird right now? What's, yeah. what's they, feel, they feel the the, sh- the little shame of like, dang, I ghosted him two months ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, dude, <laughs> since 2020, it's been insane with like church world. Yes. Because, you know, I mean, we have now we have four locations and, uh, and, you know, at the time it was three, but there was so many people who, I mean, I'm talking like grew up with, went to church yeah. with forever. And all of a sudden you run into somebody like a restaurant or whatever. And same thing. You're yep. just like, hey. Man, dude, I hadn't seen a lot of people in a while, but like, hey, we're all good, right? And then you go in for like the hug or you go in and you you see the Yes. Like they're smiling here, but right yeah. here it's awkward. And they're just yeah. like, hey. And you're like, what's up? Yeah, cool, man. And then you go away and you're like, and then you maybe you text somebody that was closer to them. Hey, how so and so? Are they still? It's like, yeah, man, some stuff went down. Yeah. And they said this about, you know, the church or they said, th- or, yep. you know, yeah, man, they kind of, they're, They're hanging out with the old crew again. It's like, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> now yeah. I know what just that's happened. It's weird. That's <laughs> true, man. Yeah. That's well, it's not fun, but that's a fun. It's I just take. the way it is, yeah. man. Every circle, you know, it's like, oh, the old awkward. We're not really gonna. We're not gonna be good friends anymore, are we? Yeah. No. Oh, and man. we'll never talk about it. We'll never. No, this will Dude. never be resolved. <laughs> It'll just be open ended and weird. <laughs> It's just normalized now, like ghosting, just yeah, not responding. To, we need to not normalize that. Man. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I, it, to me, it, it's annoying. Like, I understand the world does that. But in the church, I'm like, it's just not supposed to be like that. You know, just be honest, be transparent, be vulnerable. Yeah. At least give a thumbs up. So <laughs> like, like it doesn't it. mean like, it. <laughs> like you don't have to be best friends. You'd be like, no, right. it's not working out. Like, sorry, I've been going over here. Cool, man. Happy for you. Like, that's Make great. Make it obvious. Make yeah. it normal. Cool. Make that normal. Exactly. Ooh. Like actual Make conversations. confrontation normal. Yeah. The courageous well. conversations. Yeah. Courageous. Mm. People like to sweep things under the rug and just yeah. move on like it's not there, but it is there. And we all have to walk over it. Every time yeah, we, we see each other, it. we're all like, remember that thing that's under there? I'm like, nah, man. Just... It's like an emu putting his head in the sand. Exactly. I, I thought know. it was ostriches. It is an ostrich. Ostrich. Come emu on, too. man. Emus do that? <laughs> yeah. I've never heard of an emu putting never his in head life. in the sand. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying no. I've never heard it. Yeah. Google oh. it. You gotta Google, Google this What's one. the answer? You gotta ask Bard. Mm. Bard? Bard. Why do they, why do they go with Bard? I don't, I don't know. know. I think it's the dumbest name possible. I agree. Yeah. I'd rather I, chat GPT. Sounds cooler. Yeah. Bard. I don't hey, know Bard. Bard's sitting there like Yeah, they're trying, super to, nerdy. Hum- they're trying yeah. to humanize it. But all of all names? Um, I don't know a human named Bard. So Siri is weird, but like it's not a Siri's name. Weird. I understand it, but it's still cooler sounding than Bard. I, I think it's because Bard is close enough to be a name. Like Siri... Nobody's gonna name their person Siri, but right. I could I could see I could see a nerdy guy walking around. Yeah, Bard. Bard. Yeah, yeah. Bard. That's, true. that's a name. Alexa. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah close enough. Alexa. There's Alexis, but Alexa. But Siri, I don't know. Bard Sarah, is like Bard, way out there. Bart. That's what it's reminding me of. Yeah. Any but, emus in the? Nope. I don't know emus. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's a thing. I think ostriches do that. I think yeah. you should apologize. Yeah. Ooh, I apologize to the public. Square Friders. Uh, Chat GPT, that apology. <laughs> Let's get a good one. <laughs> need a real one. <laughs> I'd like to give a shout out. I'd like to give a shout out to the Northwood Church softball team. Northwood Church softball team. We have three teams. Let's go. Three teams. Yeah, we got three teams. We Holy got smokes. a two men's team and a women's team. Oh, All right. Yeah, yeah we got a, a, a Northwood Church uh, men's softball team. It's an A team and then a B team. And Are this, you on the A or B? I'm actually going to play on both. Wow. wow. Yeah. As yeah. pastor. Privilege. Pastor. Privilege. Ah. Pastor privilege. Uh, do you yeah, play on the ladies both. team too? No, I don't do that. <laughs> don't <laughs> identify as that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's on Thursday nights I do co-ed. But uh, Monday and Tuesdays is uh, the, the 
the men's and the women's, I guess. I don't know the women's schedule, but I know mm-hmm. Thursdays is all co-ed. So anyway, want to like send it. out the invite. Sharp looking invite. jersey. Thank you, yeah, thank you. Sharp nice. looking jersey. I'm number 25. Oh. Wow. Ooh, got the names and five. everything. Two five. Two five is my, uh, me and Aideen's high school athletic numbers. So Ooh, I've had the number 25 wow, since uh, wow. 14 or 15. So that's my number. Damn. But anyway, All right, I want to hear some predictions. I want to hear some predictions. Um, who will lead your team in home runs? Oh, home runs? Yeah. Uh, okay. Bard. Gerald, Matt, or uh, Nico, Derek. Probably. Derek. Uh, well, it, I would say Nico because Nico. he's more consistent in it. The other guys have all the power in the world, but I've seen Nico hit more home runs consistently okay. than the other mm-hmm. guys. It'll be either him or Sam. I don't want to take Sam out of the running. Sam is the tennis The coach. transitional guy? Mm-hmm. The tra- uh, the, the tra- sorry. Whoa. Tra- Whoa. Chat that. <laughs> Clip Whoa. that. That's a good actually, That's going to be a sound bite. <laughs> he does the transitions Sam. on Sunday? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, he's the announcement Damn. guy. Yeah. Uh, Sam, so tennis coach, and uh, he hits it out. So I think last year him and Nico were probably tied for home runs, but um, it's always a good time. Good softball. Come out. We, you know, we 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 don't have really good attendance to softball games. I'll be I'll be honest. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like Sunday mornings. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I watch online. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you guys stream that? <laughs> you know, it's so funny. It doesn't matter how much you talk about like online and live. Like people are gonna watch online no matter what. They don't care. We should but just anyway. take the stream down. We should, dude, I, dude I let's just take it down. Do that no stream Sunday. Do that. I no stream so, Sunday. Look, the only reason that I am not is because of all the legitimate reasons and right. all the legitimate yeah. people. There's older people sometimes who they're you know sick or whatever they can't get out the house and so yeah. that's that's their connection, and then there's people out of town. There's people who work. There's a lot of legitimate reasons. Kids are sick, and for all of those reasons, it's like no, it's worth it. But yeah, for all the people who are just like literally laying in bed, you know they're like 30 years old, yeah. like pajamas, completely healthy, loving this, like yeah. no reason, like just like ah. Eh. I want it two Saturdays back to back. It's like, come on. Anyway. Yeah. So, um, but what was the question? Attendance to softball games. Yeah. Man, dude, the crowd. <laughs> it's like, man, we, need, we need some more love out there. You know what I'm saying? What does a normal you guys audience don't even look ever like? come out to the games. What no. am I talking about? Because no. yeah. <laughs> Joel, Joel used to be on the team. Many he used years to be on ago. the team. I used to be on the team. Yeah. Micah's never played. A long. Yeah, probably like like the second year we played. Years, dude, maybe you and Sam should play next year. Uh, we would love we that. need I mean, we yeah. need some we need some guys to jump on the team. We could use probably like five more guys right now. We've got we had twenty eight and then like six dropped out, you know, for different reasons. So we and we need some young guys up in there too, man. We need some young guys. So this like, is I'm the call. I so this is the call now, to it's too our late audience. Now. Oh, too I thought late, you were saying five more. My bad. Oh, for people to actually come out to the game, it is. It'd be cool this year Thursday nights. No. Nope. No, Monday, Monday, and Tuesday. A, I thought you said co-ed. There's a co-ed. co-ed. We I'm don't sorry. Have that's what got stuck in my head. Mondays, yeah. Tuesdays. It's a pretty circle Watch right language. now. She doesn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> I heard Thursday. She on Friday nights. <laughs> I'm, start, I'm starting down. my own softball league, C League. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that wants to be in the softball Dude, league. There used to be so many teams that went all the way to D. Dude, I'm here wow. for the D team. There was Let's so go, many. There were so many uh, teams. Remember when Joel and Zach Guthrie collided? Yeah, I remember that. It was bad, bad. I thought you died. Yeah, it was painful. Yeah. Joel went to be with the Lord that it was, night. It was painful. I, I was wanted, like, no, I'm not dude, done. it was I the, to. Uh, <laughs> dude, I wish we could uh, clip him and Zach running together and then intro intros those guys from Africa carrying the casket. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Zach's so much shorter than me. His head just went dude, right he's here. Strong. It was bad. He's just Straight solid. Up. It was bad. Hey, I got to pee so bad that I have to go pee. We should just end. We should just be done. 